This is Dr. Holt. In this problem, I have excuse me, <clears throat> two objects. A mass is M1, 475. This will be my 475 gram. Again, that's gram, not kilogram. Mass 2 is 535.5 gram. They're connected by a string of negligible mass that passes over a pulley with frictionless bearings. The pulley is uniform. It has a mass of 40 9.5 grams and its radius is 4.2 centimeters. What we want to do on this one is to find the acceleration of the objects and then we want to do the tensions and find out how much the tensions are going to differ. All right, <clears throat> so let's look at this problem. Again, the first thing to do with a problem like this is go ahead and draw your free by diagram of each object here. So I'll do the 475 first. If I do that, I'll draw the arrows here. Now I have more mass here, so the object's going to accelerate upward. So off to the side, I'll put mass times acceleration this way. I'll change that here. All right, so this will be our tension. We'll call this T1. And this right here will be our T1. All right, so here, this will be 475 divided by 1,000. Make sure you get back to kilograms times 9.8. I'll run that number real quick. So 475 divided by 1,000 times 9.8 gives me a force of 4.655 newtons. All right, off to the side here, we'll just make this point 0.475 times acceleration. All right, at this point, go ahead and write your equation, the summation of forces in the y is equal to mass times acceleration in the y. When I do that, I'll have T1 minus 4.655 is equal to 0.475A. Be very careful with your sign conventions. They have to be correct because if you reverse something, then the tensions are going to be off, and which will make the torque off. So move this to the other side. Tension will be 4.655 plus 0.475 times my acceleration. Okay, so that's going to be your first major step. Second step is do the free by diagram of the other one. I'll come down here, draw it right down here. Okay. We'll draw this vector coming straight down here. This will be our mass times gravity. We'll have a tension coming back up here. And we know it's going to accelerate down this way here. Let me straighten that up a little bit. <clears throat> All right, so this value right here would be 0.5335 times 9.8. Okay, when we do that, that value will give us. 5.24. Okay, this will be our mass and acceleration, so this will be 0 0.5335 times our acceleration, and this value here would be our T2. Okay, do the same thing, solve, take the summation of forces in the Y, set it up equal to mass times acceleration in the Y. We'll get T2 minus 5.2479 is equal to. Now this is where you got to really be careful. Make sure you do that negative because you're showing it going down. Solve for A. Let me solve for T2. Move this to the other side. So T2 would equal to 5.2479 minus 0.5335 5A. 
Okay, so that's our second major step. Okay, now at this point in time, all we have to do is draw this and show our show them on the pulley itself. Alright, and we'll have a tension coming down here. We'll have a tension coming down here like this. Make that a little straighter. Alright, we'll lay, bring this in. So this will be 5. I'll do that in block, sorry. Five point two four seven nine minus point five three three five times a this value here we based upon this one four point six five five plus point four seven five times your acceleration all right at this point all you want to do once you get that is say the summation of torques. And you can do a T or spell it out, whatever you prefer. It's always going to equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. So now the torque, since it's spinning around this point right here, it's going to be this value times the radius. Same thing here, this value times the radius. Now using standard convention, anything that goes this way, we will make positive. So we'll write this all out and then we'll be ready to solve it. So now we go back and let's validate again what the radius is. And the radius was given as what? Let's see here. 4.28 centimeters. 0 0.0428 times this value here. And we're going to make that positive. 4.655 plus 0.475 times A. Then you minus 0 0.0428 times 5.2979 minus 0.5335 times acceleration. Let me just verify that that is a Four, a nine or a four, I can't quite tell here. Five two, it's a five two four. Just be careful there. Don't make the same mistake I did. So five two four. Okay, we're going to set that equal to the moment of inertia. Now that with the disc, it's going to be one half times the mass times r squared. That's going to be a moment of inertia, and then we're going to do that times angular acceleration. So let's go ahead and calculate that. We'll try to get it all in here. Let's move this over so we got a little space. Okay, that's going to equal to one half. Then what is the mass of the pulley? That's what you're looking for. What's spinning? The inertia of it. The mass of the pulley, 49.5. over a thousand. Getting that back into kilograms. Times the radius. And we said the radius is 0 0.0428. And that's squared times angular acceleration. Now let's see if we can cancel some things out. I'll cancel this out here, which is going to cancel uh, this out right here in it. Now let's think about angular acceleration. Let's see what we're looking for. We were actually looking for uh, we're looking for the acceleration. So we're looking for a. So now we to solve this, we need to get rid of the angular acceleration. Get our terms of a. We know if we take angular acceleration and we multiply it by the radius, which is 0 0.0428, we will get the tangential acceleration. So we're going to solve for this so we know angular acceleration is equal to nothing more than A over 0 0.0428. We will 
take out this value right here and substitute back in. 0 0.0428. Now we can cancel out this and cancel out this. We're only left with our unknown here, here, and here. So we have one unknown, so now we can solve the problem. Okay, that's going to give us four. I should move it down just a little bit. 4.655 plus 0.475a. Make sure you distribute this to both places. Minus 5.2479, and that would become plus 0.5335a. And let's see, we cancel out almost everything over here. So let's just go ahead and do the math on that real quick. Um, so I got 0 0.5 times 49.5 divided by 1,000. And that's going to give us 0 0.02475 times A. Now let's see one more thing, make sure everything, okay, one thing I'm going to recommend too, and there's, I almost forgot to do that, when you, when you do this side here, you got to make this part negative, here and here, and the reason being is because your acceleration, since you set up your torque to go this way, you know the object could accelerate this way, since acceleration is going to be negative here, make sure you put a negative here, and I almost forgot to do that, so this has to be negative. Now, we're ready to solve the problem. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add the acceleration, move them to the other side. So that's going to give me 0.475 plus 0.5335. And then we're going to add it to the other one because that's a negative 2. Actually, I'll just let me write it out like this. So my accelerations on this side is going to be 1.0085a. These values here are 4.655 minus 5.2479. So I get minus 0.5929 is equal to and I'll make this the negative 0.02475a. We subtract that from this side, move it to the other. So I got 1.0085 plus, shut that phone off, plus 0 0.02475. Okay. So that gives me negative 0.5929 is equal to negative 1.03325a. We take that value there and we divide it by the 1.0335 and that's going to give us an acceleration of negative 0.5738 meters per second squared. Alright, just go up here and we'll check to see if we got that right. And we did, 0 0.573. Alright, so that's exactly what you want to do with that. So, again, the only word of caution here is just to make sure that you, when you do the your angular acceleration, that if you know it's going to rotate clockwise, go ahead and negate it. All right, negate it, because otherwise you'll never get the right answer. Um, the other one now that just kind of falls apart. What is the tension in the string? At uh, let's do the first one uh, for the 4.75. So the 4.75 is here. That was our T1. So use this equation right here. We'll come back up out, up to here, and we'll just put in the values of 4.655. Now here, make sure um, we've shown the acceleration here. Uh, being negative, I'm sorry, being negative, go back to the picture. We showed the acceleration here uh, going up. 
So we'll just make that. Since it's going up and we made it going up and we know it's going that direction, then we will make that positive. Okay, so now take point five seven three eight two times point four seven five plus four point six five five. That gives a value of four point nine three. Okay, you're going to do the same thing for T2. Now, when you run that number, I ran it, I'm going to get a value of about 4.94. Now, one of the things this specific problem did, and um, I would never do that to um, as far as homework goes. Actually, let me change this to Newton's. Is they've obviously done, used the unit 9.81 as the. Uh, acceleration of gravity to get this and they've also done four decimal places which to me is a little bit ridiculous with this problem the, what, the most important thing I want you to, be able to do is follow the approach and the approach is to follow something very similar to what I'm doing here alright so now the part C this one I'm not going to um, to work because we've done these in previous problems to do C in that case you would just do away with the mass of the pulley itself and you could set this up for a, as a system and then you could find your acceleration so part C you shouldn't have any problem doing that alright I hope this video helped you um, again it's not really that difficult it's just working methodically through it make sure you're set up good free by diagrams make sure you establish the direction that uh, what's going to be positive what direction is going to be uh, negative and then again make sure and I almost made the mistake myself is that when you do your acceleration that if you know the angular accelerations gonna go clockwise then go ahead and negate this side alright best of luck